Hello, everyone, and welcome to this afternoon webinar. How are you guys doing today? Is everyone all right? Do you guys have a great time so far? Hello, hello. Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. So we're just waiting for Jens to join us. He should be with us uh, within the next few minutes. So if you allow me just to make sure that you are aware about our YouTube channel here at Admirals. And I know that many of you already know, but for the new guys here, here at the Trading Spotlight, you will find all the recording webinars uh, from uh, Jens, myself, and Paul. Paul is doing an um, amazing job with price action. Jens is doing an exceptional job with fundamentals. And I'm dealing with the psychological part of the trading. If you scroll down, of course, you're going to find the live trading uh, webinars I do every morning. But that's where you, I believe you have to uh, pay a lot of attention so you can uh, improve your learning tactics. Hello, Jens. It's a pleasure and honor to have you here. Hello, Theo. Nice How to are you? Here. Yeah, well, I, I just checked my portfolio uh, and after <laughs> Tesla earnings, I, I okay. realized, I recognized, okay, I, I still have to work today. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. That's interesting. <laughs> All so right. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm great. I'm doing great. You look fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, man. It's always, <laughs> always pleasure. Um, I already shared my screen. I hope I had yes. the allowance to do so. Um, yes, absolutely. And so let me just type on, in, hello, the traders. Stage is yours. <laughs> So yeah, um, see you, see you um, next week in the order book. I, I heard that uh, you are um, um, a heavy scalper in Microsoft next week. <laughs> uh, we will see. for for sure. I will keep scalping the DAX. That's the only thing for sure. Ah, you you are this guy. I was I was wondering who's who's um, um, putting in uh, one thousand uh, one thousand blocks here. Ah, uh, that's the one. <laughs> like around the the opening, it's like ah, it's you. Okay, uh, great, great. <laughs> so finally, that makes sense. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so, man, I wish you good luck, and I'm sure everyone will really enjoy will enjoy your uh, your valuable webinar today. I, I hope so. I hope. Hope so <laughs> so hello and uh welcome you i want to welcome you here today today's um trading spotlight webinar together with admirals and um so today we want to have a look at something um it's it's always a question i receive over and over and over again like um what are the key events uh you look at and um sometimes um or in the past it's, it's been a while but uh some discussions have um um uh well, went in a very, very strange direction, let's say. So people asking me, um, especially around um, the time European debt crisis, especially uh, that was um, 2011 with Greece and 2012, 2013. Some of you probably recall uh, the, the words being used from Mario Draghi back then, um, we will do whatever it takes. And that was um, in 12, I think in July, in June, in London somewhere. Um, and uh, so people, well, obviously, th these were the drivers back then. Um, and then someone came to me and said, well, I just realized that, th that there was a release of the Brazilian GDP. And that's why I think EURUSD spiked here on the up and down side. And that was, in fact, already 10 years ago, uh, the main motivation here to probably um, uh, make this a topic and, and uh, repeat this over the years. And, and make sure that um, people are aware of the most relevant um, economic um, indicators. It's like, well, well, it's it's um it's changing certainly. So um, let's for example say inflation hasn't been a topic for quite a while, um, and has been the hottest um, topic um, for all markets, in fact, over the course of the year 2022. Um, housing markets right now, no one cares about housing markets. Um, well, that don't tell this someone who um, was actively uh, trading during 2007, especially 2008, the housing market, and once the, the um, housing bubble burst in the US, especially, um, 
causing the great financial crisis. Well, obviously the housing markets was very, very hot back then and everyone looked at the numbers. Um, and so this certainly changes, but there are some key aspects, um, key economic indicators I look at all the time. Um, and I want to share these with you. And um, so let's let's get started. I don't think that I need to um, introduce Admirals um, any further after uh, Teo's introduction here. Um, one world one broker. So um, if you're um, 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 if you're interested in, in learning more about the um, offering from Admirals, check out the website admiralmarkets.com. Fully regulated broker. Um, and very, very competitive offering here over here, for example, in Germany, we refer to to admirals as the DAX expert, for example, with one of the if not the most competitive offering when it comes to DAX CFD trading. So it was no consent that um, um, Theo mentioned uh, the DAX earlier. And um, but today, our topic, in fact, um, will be the four most watched probably at least at my end, most watched economic indicators. Um, and I want to share with you, not these, um, um, uh, only these, but also why they're of importance for me. And um, we want to dig a little deeper um, into each of these indicators. And um, so you have a already overview here um, on uh, which indicators we want to shine a light today. So GDP, respectively, uh, gross domestic product, especially here, the growth rate. Um, interest rate decisions. So obviously ECB, um, Fed, for example, by the way, Fed in one and a half weeks at the third of, of May could be of interest, by the way. Uh, we want to dig, we'll dig deeper into um, um, this, this, this event here. After we um, uh, covered the employment numbers, um, non-farm payrolls on the, uh, I think it's the fifth then, we want to we wanna have a look at these. Um, and certainly we have to have a look at inflation rate. It has been a topic before last year. Um, probably it went warmer, let's say, around the uh, inflation releases after um, the, the COVID pandemic and how um, um, governments around the world um, covered or respectively countered the economic downturn, which resulted out of the lockdowns, which was um, by spending billions, trillions of US dollar, JPY, euros, and so on and so forth. And there was uh, fewer goods, obviously, because uh, there were there were um, a supply chain interruptions, naturally, if, you, if you're locking down um, economies. And uh, these fewer goods were chased by more and more liquidity. Well, which is naturally causing inflation. And though um, we already could it see, we, we could foresee it, and let's say uh, that inflation will pick up rather sooner than later. Um, the same is now, right now, true, I think, for the uh, situation in the employment sector, um, especially with um, uh, the developments around um, AI. Well, but we have already um, seen um, um, earlier signs um, of, of um, um, layoffs, especially pro potentially triggered by um, um, Elon Musk after he took over Twitter and uh, fired, I think, 80% of the staff or something. And uh, everyone was uh, waiting for uh, the big collapse of Twitter. Well, it's not coming. Twitter is still there, um, probably working um, better than ever before um, and uh, with, with, with lots of reach right now. And um, this is now making rounds, let's say, at the other big tech companies, but, by the way, which will release earnings next week. Um, and that means we've already seen several rounds of, of layoffs, but right now we haven't seen um, any spike, let's say, in the unemployment rate. I'm I'm kind of surprised by that, but could imagine that this will become a topic in the years to come. In fact, um, similar to inflation, which is like, uh, yeah, well, I, I refer to this as kind of a, let's call it ketchup effect, right? So you probably remember the bottles with ketchup in the past, and then you um, um, you try to get something out of the, the, the bottle, and there's no ketchup coming, no ketchup coming, and at the end, you get a flush and then you have um, um, more ketchup than you ever wished for your, your French fries in this case. And um, this is similar to, to inflation. Uh, it's very easy or it's not that easy to get inflation out of the bottle. If you get it out of the bottle, you have a big plop and you get lots of inflation and then it's very difficult to get it back into the bottle. Um, but coming back to inflation rate in this case, respectively unemployment rate and, and the developments in the employment sector, 
I could imagine that this will be a topic um, um, in the months to come, probably in the year to come. Uh, in this case, as of now, I'm kind of surprised. I already said this towards clients that was um, um, in the late 2022. Um, I, I said, well, I could imagine there will be some some bad developments. Um, probably this is now accelerated by the developments in the AI sector, but let's see. So. These are, this is an overview, and what's probably even more of interest for you now is um, there's a great indicator, um, or respectively, there's an add-on. That's probably a better way to put it. There's an add-on you can download for free on the website at atmarmarkets.com, um, and under the Supreme add-on or a Supreme Edition add-on. You can download it for free. It's a, um, um, it's a, it's an indicator um shelf to some extent probably and there you have uh, a tab which called or you have an indicator which is called economic calendar and here you have the chance to display all or individualizing um the news events which should be displayed in your metatrader each day um so which are of relevant you can also filter them by relevance for example and that's um a great great way to 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 illustrate this i will show you this and in, in, in the later stage of this of this webinar but now what well, Let's start and have a look here at the um, GDP growth rate for um, first overview of why this is of importance. And and by the way, I just realized that's a little unfortunate. Let me just let me just check out something. I, I want to see um, if I if I can find this. Let me let me just see. But unfortunately, I don't really know. Probably it's here. Um, I, I just want to give you probably a ranking. I just realized. I I just realize that I have a chart, a graphic, which is nicely illustrating. Probably this is a good way to put it. It's a, it's another slide. So um, you will see it here. So this is how you could see a ranking um, in terms of, um, um, of the, of the, um, um, how how the how the how the um, how these parameters interact with each other, and I think within this um, you can already and and quite clearly spot why obviously GDP growth rate is of um, um, the highest importance. Then you have interest rates, and then you have the inflation. So employment unemployment rate, you can see it here. Um, it's in the same stage as consumption rate, income, and trade balance. Probably trade balance has been a big topic in the 1980s. Um, uh, it was uh, it was uh, mentioned in one of the interviews from Schwager. I think he did with Bruce Koner, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but right now, it's not a big uh, a big big deal, big topic here. In fact, probably could could become a bigger topic um, once uh, tensions keep on rising between the U.S. and China. But right now, um, especially the situation in the unemployment um, um, sector here, uh, respectively, in the employment situation, is of interest for us. And obviously, that directly correlated to consumption rate and income, because if people don't have a job, they don't have income, and they can't consume, right? So that makes sense. Um, but this is like um, 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 how you could how you could drill it down um, um, in a in a ranking here. So j just to give you give you an, um, an an overview, I just realized that that I have um, a chart here. But now let's have a look at the GDP growth rate, what it is, why it's of importance, and um, as you can see here. So first of all, GDP or economic growth in this case um, is represented by the economic indicator called GDP. So this is short for gross domestic product. And what does the gross domestic product, what does it show us? Well, it shows or it's calculating the value of production for any country around the globe during a specific period of time, quarterly or yearly. Uh, and usually it's it's released um, three times a quarter. And let me just, by the way, also unfortunate, I just realized I haven't prepared this. Um, I love to, to use trading economics for this, by the way. Um, so in fact, we have a great um, Forex calendar to have all these news events being displayed. So here via the analytics tab and then Forex calendar um, here. And uh, so you can, you can individualize it yourself. So just let me share probably here the link in the chat box for further details. Um, I call it ethics calendar. There you go. Um, but what we are interested in um, is the GDP. And um, what we want to do, you can see it already here, tradingeconomics.com. And there you have indicators. And there you can go to GDP growth. This is what we are looking at right now. Um, and then you have all countries around the globe. And what we are of 
Um, um, what's of our interest here is the United States, especially. We could also have a look at the Euro um, um, zone here, but let's have a look at the United States. And what you can see is, if you click here on GDP growth rate, you see this is year on year. And then you can see there is advanced or... Um, 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 is, is it advanced? Is that the right word? So it's the first, let's say, first estimate, probably. That's a way, of, that's a fair way to put it. First estimate, then you have a second estimate, and then you have a final reading. So in this case, it's Q2. Um, here now we are looking at, or respectively, it's um, um, Q4, and now we are looking at Q1. And the numbers are released, in fact, next week. So next week on, as you say, 27th, I think it's Thursday, if I'm not mistaken, um, these numbers are released and could trigger some kind of volatility. Um, but it's only the first estimate. So the consens consensus here right now is 2%. And um, if numbers come in at 2%, you shouldn't expect much volatility. But the interesting thing now is if you have the first estimate coming in at 2%, and then there is a big difference in the second estimate um, one month later, by the way. So these numbers, as you can see here, so it's February, it's March. So that was for Q4. Um, we already got the first estimate in January. So this is now in, in April. Then you have one month later, the second estimate, and then the third month or the, 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 the um, um, three months later. In fact, at the end of the um, following quarter, you get the final Q, um, 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 uh, GDP rating in this case. So you probably um, um, find this kind of irritating because um, you get these numbers once a month and you just wonder how I mean, why why does it why is it necessary to 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 um um show us these um um data sets that often um in fact it's some um, different estimates you can see here and um there was it's not that often um that the first estimate differs dramatically from the second estimate but it happens and if it happens you um obviously coming back to the presentation here um you obviously um, have a difference in terms of the outlook for the growth, respectively, um, uh, yeah, the, gro the growth outlook for an economy in general, which is directly affecting yields, which is then affecting, obviously, yield-sensitive um, um, assets like gold, for example, but also dollar JPY, for example, especially to, to point these two, but also having an impact or making an impact on, uh, um, 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 let's call them debt markets, like T-notes, for example, or T-bonds, for example. And um, so long thing short, um, coming back now to, to um, the, the number itself. So it's calculating the value of production for any current year, country during um, a specific period of time. And as you can see, in terms of the US dollar, for example, um, the US um, um, United States, you have three estimates. So you have the first estimate, then one month later, the second estimate is published. And then the third one, at the end of the following quarter, you get the final uh, release of the GDP print. And um, what you usually say is, um, so this is now classic um, and theoretic, uh, the theoretical um, content here. So usually a rising GDP is considered a positive sign for your domestic currency as it will lead to make more in investors trying to profit from the economic growth of the underlying um, economy in this case. So if you want, if you want to participate in this, um, you usually what you do is you buy the underlying currency because you can understand the currency as kind of a well it's it's the currency the euro for example is is a share um, you can buy in the European um, um, Union for example or the U.S. dollar is a share of the uh, biggest economy in the world the United States or yuan renminbi for example well this is the um, stock of of China if you want and. Um, so if you want to profit, and then you might wonder, okay, why? I mean, purely speculative speaking, certainly, well, you get demand for the underlying currency, so that should rise in value compared to another currency. But um, in fact, what you what you do, and this is the last point, as a result, investors to participate here have to buy the domestic currency, which naturally results in the value of the domestic currency to increase. But this is also... Um, also meaning coming back to one of the earlier webinars we did together here with with admirals so if you have strong economic growth you have to make sure that the underlying economy does not overheat which means the central bank has to hike rates which makes it more attractive to keep an um 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 
the underlying currency. So it's not just the demand resulting out of the outlook for the economic growth, but also rising interest, um, um, which is kind of a dividend if you want. So you're getting paid for holding the currency in your account because you're buying this higher yield currency and you're selling your... In, yeah, you're selling the um, 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 counter currency. So for example, let's say you're coming to the conclusion uh, that the European um, economy is not that, it's not looking that prosperous, let's say for several reasons. Um, and, and you're saying, but I have a very positive outlook when it comes um, to the US for whatever reason, just for, for um, um, as an example. So then you say, well, I'm selling my euros and for the, the money I receive, I buy the US dollar. So you're going Euro USD short in this context. So you're betting on the US economy to outpace the European economy. And thus you're buying and you're you're betting on an um, um, appreciation of the US dollar compared to the Euro. And also um, you're betting on the Fed to keep on hiking rates. If you come to a counter conclusion, like you now say, well, it doesn't look as if um, the Fed will continue hiking rates, but it looks like due to the the um, um, deceleration or let's say um, the not that prosperous outlook for the U.S. economy, I'm not that sure if, if the U.S. dollar will continue um, 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 to rise in value, but I expect the Fed, in fact, to cut rates. Well, you're selling the stock of this economy. You're selling the U.S. dollar and then buying back your euros, let's say, for example. This is how you how you can understand that, and um, why the GDP obviously matters, and the print there matters. Let's 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 just have a look here um, once again on 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 this. And next week, the print two percent. Let's now assume numbers come in, uh, but they come in for Q1 at let's say one point eight percent. That shows that the overall economic outlook. Is worse, than, is worse than what the market expects and worsening compared to the uh, um, um, quarters earlier. So you can see here, for example, Q1 and Q2, we had two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth, which is, by the way, um, um, the definition of a recession. So that what the Fed just mentioned around one and a week, it was one week ago, right? So last week on Wednesday, um, they, they said, well, we weren't that um, um, clear about our, our monetary policy path and continuing hiking rates. Well, because there were some members saying we are we are seeing signs of a recession at the horizon. That was roughly speaking what they what they um, 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 told um, with, within their their fat minutes. And um, well, we could have seen that coming because well, we had already signs of that here after after a strong let's call it the COVID bounce, and then into uh, the end of of, of twenty twenty one. Um, there was already um, signs of a, of a recession at the horizon. And now you had two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. Well, this is a clear classic um, um, in, um, uh, definition of, an, of a recession. Another way to, to um, see a recession at the horizon is if you look at yields. And um, in this context, for example, let me just, do I have it here? Let me just let me let me just share my screen here. Let, let me just share my screen here. So this is a Tesla chart, but we are working, we want to look here at um, you can see US 10 and you can see US 2. Um, why do I have these two here? Well, because um, they show me what mark what the market is expecting in terms of yields, and it's all also direct correlation or negative in this case, in fact, um, negative correlation to gold, for example. But what we are pointing out here is you can see two year yields are right now above four percent, while 10 year yields are at 3.5 percent. Um, let's say in a normal world, that doesn't make sense because you say, well, in case of a 10 year um, bond, you're handing out your money to the US government here for 10 years. So you're risking that within the next 10 years, um, the US potentially will default on their debt. Um, while in two years, it's unlikely because the, the, the duration is just shorter. So usually you say, well, for having the higher risk of um, the US government defaulting on their risk, well, I want a higher yield. If you have a lower yield at the longer end of the um, um, yield curve, while the um, 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 two years are, are paying you 4%, well, there must be a reason for that. And it's very simple. What's the reason? Because two-year yields, for example, are 
directly positively correlated to the FEDs, um, um, and in this case, the target rate. So that means if the FEDs, as the Fed did in the in the recent past, um, hikes rates, two-year yields are running higher, while if the market participants start to be more cautious, or let's say they are skeptical in terms of the um, economic outlook for the U.S. here, well, you expect longer-term yields to come down because you don't expect the central bank, in this case, the Fed, to hike continuously, aggressively into the future, which means lower yields coming down. This is like you see at least a softening in terms of economic growth, or you're, all, you, you're potentially seeing a recession at the horizon, shorter term. And this is exactly how you can spot um, um, recessions, in fact. And and well, again, that's that's a more complicated way to do it looking at yields. But um, when looking here at uh, at the GDP and the growth rate, and you see two quarters, consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth, usually this is what points to a recession or it's clear indication that something's going wrong for the underlying economy. So that's it. So one of the most important um, um, economic indicators when trading FX is certainly GDP growth rate. Um, Certainly also true interest rate decisions right now, especially and especially when looking, for example, at um, um, equities. And by the way, let me just hear uh, probably no, 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 no. Wait a second. Um, so interest rates, obviously, I, I made it already a topic. You, 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 you saw that here when I pointed to two year and 10 year um, U.S. yields. And by the way, let me just one second, please. I have to I have to fill up my my chart here. By the way, it was no coincidence that I mentioned a Tesla earlier um, when Theo was here. I mentioned Tesla for a simple reason because I think after the sell-off yesterday, um, it will be a, it will be very interesting to see um, how the how the stock reacts today because we sold off sharply. We are certainly bearish, um, and and I think the earnings call didn't go that well to be honest with Musk and 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 some are questioning the overall profitability. Um, and 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 dropping um, gross margins, which were not um, um, addressed. But I have to say, um, everyone everyone is expecting now bearishness in Tesla. And if we're making it above the um, um, two-day up in this case, so the volume weighted average price, and we're breaking above and hold above, and that's right now. Let me just see. Yeah, somewhere around 165, 50, 166. If we make it above that level and hold, I could imagine that there's probably some profit taking taking place after the huge sell off yesterday, which could then trigger a short squeeze higher and probably letting us close the, the week above 170. Um, so I'm not that sure. I also formulated the short thesis for today, but I could imagine that there's probably a bounce. But this is US equities. We are here at interest rates decisions, and um, you are here right now at the macro picture. And uh, so, Interest rates. When it comes to interest rates, we speak about the potential yield an investor or buyer of a currency can expect to earn, respectively has to pay if he wants to borrow money, for example, from a bank. And if a central bank decides to increase interest rates, for example, during times of significant economic growth, that's the usual environment in which you see rate hikes, or if inflation gets out of control after a massive stimulus which took place following a pandemic and you're locking people up at their homes and want to keep them silent. Okay, I haven't said this, but uh, yeah, well, th that was exactly how we countered um, uh, the economic downturn following the COVID pandemic. And again, um, um, forcing people to stay at home without really explaining to them, but handing out stimulus checks to them and tell them here, if you stay at home, you're not losing your jobs because um, we are paying your employer uh, millions of, of US dollar, euros, whatever, um, to stay in business. And <clears throat> we also make sure that you're um, staying on the payroll. And in addition to that, here is some some extra money if, if, you, if you're in need of that. Um, at the end, in Germany, for example, we called this a Corona Hilfe. I have to laugh about this. And I have to make it a topic because a friend of mine um, 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 just, just um, um, ask for the, it. wasn't my friend. In fact, it, it wasn't. It was my, my 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 best friend here. But it was his wife who said, "Well, I I, I want to make sure that we get money here." <clears throat> and then something like six months later, they come and say, "Well, we want our money back." So the, the government in this case. Um, however, so long thing short, if you have more money floating around after you give out these stimulus checks and you have fewer goods which were produced respectively, um, you have supply chain issues. You have more money chasing fewer goods and you have a pickup in inflation. And to 
to fight inflation, you have to hike interest rates. So it's not the economic growth right now, but it's the um, raging inflation around the globe, which is countered by aggressive interest rate hikes, which we're currently seeing. <clears throat> So it's not the significant economic growth, but it's in fact inflation. Well, there is, let's say, soft economic growth, if there is any economic growth at all, which means you are hiking in a very fragile environment and you're risking um, um, seeing a stagflation, respectively forcing the economy into a recession. So it's not necessarily sad that, you, that you're seeing rate hikes only if you... Um, 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 if you see strong economic growth, but it's also to, to, to fight inflation in this case. And nevertheless, naturally, it should result in higher demand on the local currency in order to get higher returns and vice versa. Um, so this is, this is exactly where we stand right now, especially when looking at the US dollar. Some of you might have wondered, um, why is that right now? So um, we dropped below parity. Euro USD, for example, um, in 2022. And now we're bouncing something like 20% within what is it? Something like half a year, probably. So I think we, we made the lows around um, um, September, if I'm not mistaken. And now we are seeing a, a clear trend back above and towards and close to 110. Um, so why is that? Because um, if you look at the yield differential, you see that um, US dollar is paying where the Fed is, is staying at a very, very high level in terms of interest rates, why euro market or euro in this case, or well, European Central Bank isn't paying that high interest. Why is that? Well, it's simple. Why is the euro not reacting weak to this and, and selling off? It's simple because um, the, the market itself is a, is a discounting mechanism. And the market is already expecting that the Fed will cut rates rather sooner or later, while um, the ECB potentially will follow um, um, their rate height a rate hike circle to, to bring back inflation under control. Probably this is not necessary. That could be a surprise um, for some market participants. And we could see another sell-off in the euro, <clears throat> especially if the political landscape starts to um, um, erode, let's say. Um, not really sure about the situation over here in Germany. Not really sure if um, we should, could consider Germany still to be the biggest um, economy in the euro. It certainly is also in terms of GDP. Um, but then being said that, I mean, um, we see the economic downturn and, and that is overly, obviously um, um, potential deindustrialization taking place over here in Germany, especially around the, the um, energy situation. And if you look at the government, well, and long thing short, usually Germany is considered to be the backbone of the Eurozone, which means, or the Euro itself, which means if the backbone is broken, the Euro breaks. Um, or you have to find someone who can take over and make sure that the Euro um, um, has a reason to stay, let's say. Um, and that being said, makes me a little skeptical about the overall outlook, especially if inflation keeps on falling. And I think producer prices in Germany just um, really collapsed um, within the last two days, if, if, I, if I remember the data correctly. So, but coming back to, um, to, to um, um, yields here, the question you might have wondered about is um, why or how is a central bank finding out what's the fair interest rate? So, how do they make sure, uh, why do they say, well, let's say 4% is the right um, 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 target rate we should aim for? Um, wh where does this come from? And in fact, there is a rule, it's called the Taylor rule, which delivers a theoretical idea of a fair yield level. It's um, a, a chart, which I took in 2019, I think. Um, I, I haven't updated it, but it makes sure, or it, 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 it helps us to understand um, where if you, if you, if you um, um, value, let's say, an overall economy um, the right way, look at the GDP growth, um, you look at the growth rate, you look at the employment situation, for example, inflation expectations, and so on and so forth. And then you say, okay, the black line is the, 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 the Taylor yield in this case, and this, this orange line, well, it should follow this black line, obviously. Um, and it, if it doesn't, if it starts to diverge, well, you're running rather sooner or later into trouble because you have to hike rates more aggressively um, to, to keep up with here um, the rising Taylor uh, yield in this case, uh, which means if you have a very weak, um, um, economic outlook, for example, where uh, uh, worsening debt situation, especially in the southern European periphery. So this is the ECB um, um, interest rate level here. Well, then usually um, you're running into trouble because you have to hike more aggressively and potentially crashing the economy, respectively equity markets, which is um, 
to some extent, what we what we get to see in the U.S. right now. So we are behind the curve to some extent. That's something we could probably call it here, or when you when you're I'm hearing someone referring to that, and. Um, <clears throat> So that's how they do that. How they find the a fair um, interest rate level um, um, and for their for their rate decisions in this context. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's it around interest rates and and why they matter. Um, another very important number is um, the employment data, respectively, um, the unemployment rate in this case. Um, it's also quite straightforward and something we made a topic in several um, webinars in the past in the live coverages of the non farm payrolls because some of you might have wondered why is this of interest for us and 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 why and how to interpret the data um, um the right right way so unemployment rate is the number of unemployed people from the workforce in any country and it's an important indicator obviously which should be interpreted very carefully as it's one of the main drivers of economic growth and thus price movement in the underlying currency. So each release of an of a employment situation is of relevance for the underlying EM, um, um, economy and thus the underlying currency. Like employment situation in the UK should trigger volatility in GBP, pound sterling. Um, an employment situation in the US, well, non for payrolls release, this should trigger volatility in the US dollar. Um, euro employment situation, well, it should trigger volatility in the euro and so on and so forth. And um, it's it's quite straightforward to, um, um, to, to, to interpret the data. A rising unemployment rate potentially means that the economy slows down and vice versa. I, th I think this is self-explaining um, since if you see more people being unemployed, it points to an economic downturn. And obviously... Um, the other way around, the less the um, um, people are unemployed, more people have jobs, more money they have in their pockets, more they can consume, and so on and so forth. And um, it's no coincidence that we're looking here next week on Friday. No, I'm sorry, in two weeks. Next week, we'll, I think, cover the U.S. Um, equities market opening. Um, but we want to have a look here um, at the non farm payrolls each Friday, in fact. And uh, it's one of the most important news releases in the FX market. It's known as the non farm payrolls. And um, it's published each, by the way, let me just change this that way around. Um, and it's um, usually published every first Friday of the month. And it gives us an information on the employment situation in the US, the world's biggest economy. And it should be considered, in fact, as one of the most important economic indicators from Forex traders in general. So if you trade Forex, especially, then the first Friday of the month should be of high importance for you and relevance for you because um, we we um, um, see massive volatility. I have a chart. It's a, a little older here. It's a, it's a, I released it. Uh, it was an NFP release several years ago, in fact. So looking here, you see EURUSD trading around 120 or 119. Um, so I took this um, because to make sure that you see there has been a time once these numbers were released, and probably we are about to see that um, rather sooner or later again, um, where the releases triggered volatility of 100 pips up and downside moves. That has changed over the course of the years because um, employment situation has um, um, is, is of lesser importance, let's say, for market participants around the globe, and thus not triggering that much volatility anymore. But still, again, you should be aware of that due to the fact that... Um, I see the unemployment rising over the course of the next weeks, not weeks, but quarters. And thus it will potentially also um, um, directly influence the monetary policy path uh, the underlying central bank will follow, has to follow then and counter. For example, the rise in unemployment um, rate, for example, to counter by a more dovish stance when it comes to, to the, the interest rate levels. And finally, Finally, it's the inflation rate. We wanna we wanna make a topic here, um, and also we 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 made this a topic in depth as we made in, um, a topic in depth um, um, the unemployment situation, for example, each first Friday of the month. So inflation, we already know what this is or what the inflation rate tells us. It's um, um, a term which is used in order to express the rate of change in prices of goods and services in a country. And in the um, following, you have an overview. It's the economic calendar here on, on the website from, from Admirals, um, you have an overview. So there's not just the CPI release, so the consumer price index, but there's also something you call PPI, so producer price index or core CPI. And um, 
So we want to want to shine a quite straightforward light here onto um, what each of these releases is, in fact. So the CPI is published on a monthly basis and is representing the rate of change in a basket of goods and services that are bought by consumers. So it's a consumer price index, and thus it's um, it's a highly relevant um, news release, in fact, which is very interesting. Um, I want to point this out here because this number itself is um, of high relevance, a triggering volatility, as we have seen in the recent past, um, um, it, it continued to, to trigger. But it's not the core number which um, the Fed is looking at. In fact, I will show you the number in a few seconds. I haven't listed here. Um, continue with here in the next bullet point. It's core CPI. Um, what do we do here? It's the same number as the CPI. Um, but it excludes so-called volatile goods as food and energy because they are swinging massively more um, 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 rapidly in price and thus are well if you if you if you if you subtract it or if you take this out you get a better idea of where concern current consumer prices um, can be found and also um, the PPI, producer price index so it's the measure of rate of change in prices of inputs and outputs of goods at factory gates. So it should be clear if you have a producer of a good XYZ um, and he has to pay a higher price for, let's say, um, goods like to, to produce a good, like uh, to manufacture a good oil, whatever, um, um, higher energy prices. Well, naturally, it should then be forwarded to the consumer and the consumer also has to pay a higher price. And it obviously, in, it, it depends on... Um, where we stand in the current economic cycle, respectively, what we're currently facing in the overall um, 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 economy, where we where we stand. But again, what's of interest for us? Let me just here have a look, and there I will show you how to filter this, by the way. And and we will filter everything out, despite the U.S. dollar here, and have a high impact, and apply the filter. And there you can see that next week on Friday, so here it's UK time, there's a release which is also very relevant when it comes to inflation. It's the core PCE price index. Let me just copy paste this and fill it in here. And let's Google that. Um, so it's probably not, not the best way to, to, to show it. Let me just see. So first of all, what's the difference between these two? Okay, this is very interesting. You can see it here. CPI uses a narrow definition of consumer expenditures and only considers urban expenditures made directly by consumers. In contrast, the PCE considers expenditures made by urban and rural consumers, as well as expenditures made on their behalf by third parties. So um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a more pathological way to probably look at inflation. But unfortunately, I, I'm a little surprised. I thought that that we would get this um, right here in the first number uh, at the first page, but we don't. That's interesting. So you have it here in Germany. In German. So long thing short, uh, it's in fact the favored way to measure inflation by the Fed. So in fact, market participants are looking at the inflation numbers, but I think what's of higher importance or what's more of interest is in fact the release here, the core PCE price index, um, which is released next week. But you will see that this number, not necessarily, probably right in the current environment, yes, but it's unlikely to see a more volatile move, mainly due to the fact that um, 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 inflation data was already released earlier that month, um, two weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, two and a half weeks ago. And um, in this context here, um, well, it's, it's much of this is already baked in, but you should be aware of that. When looking at inflation, there are several ways to um, 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 cover that. And the number which the Fed looks at is the PCE, is the price deflator to some extent. We can also call it that way. It's not the CPI. So this is a very, very um, 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 important distinction, I think, we, we have to make here. But let's let's have a look here on where to find all this data. And as in fact, 
probably go that way here to display it in your chart. I prepared it already here so that we don't need to open it. And you can see it here. So these lines, you can show them directly in your chart. Um, and in this context here, make sure that you're not missing any of the big news events. And how do you find this? And where do you find this? Well, it's an add-on you can find on the website from Admirals. So you have the top platforms, admiralmarkets.com. And there you can see MetaTrader 5, four, uh, four, five, I'm sorry. And here you have the MetaTrader Supreme Edition. And I will share the link here. You can download it for free. Um, you will, once you, once you download it, you will, um, you will be asked um, which MetaTrader you're using. I think you will only have Admirals <laughs> on your desktop. So that's why um, it should be very easy. If not, well, just check for Admiral Markets and then say, okay, connect or import this um, 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 file here into my MetaTrader. And then you will see it here once you open, reopen um, the MetaTrader. Um, you close it once you run it and you, you download it. Well, you have to close the MetaTrader first and then reopen it. And then you will see it here appearing under your um, expert advisors, respectively, especially under the indicators tab. And in this context, well, you can then display here under the so-called add-on economic calendar, all news releases right into your uh, MetaTrader chart. So this is this is very very great because um, um you're you're not surprised by any big movements anymore in the future. So that happens potentially. So you just wonder why is the market right now going up or down massively? Well, if you have this displayed directly in your chart. Well, you can see the reason appearing here. So once there is such a such a um um, um green no not necessarily green but a red dot in this case especially well probably there was a news release and that's one that's the reason why. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Um, if you have any further questions, please feel free to check out um, the website admiralmarkets.com. Um, also to download the Supreme add-on. Um, if you have any questions related to the content I provided, well, please feel free to reach out directly to Admirals. They will forward your question to me. If you're watching this now on YouTube, check out um, uh, or check out the comment function below the video to ask your questions respectively. Also, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube um, video and uh, that you set a reminder so that you don't miss any of the videos which we you, which we produce here for you, for trading community, um, with my colleagues. And so that's it. I hope I hope you enjoyed the webinar. All the best. Happy trading. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. Talk to you next week once again. I look forward to it. See you.